What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you all of the Divinity games ranked. Once upon a time, this was actually a pretty Divinity-focused channel, as that is a universe and a series of games that I love very much, though eventually I kind of just ran out of things to talk about and moved on to other stuff, which has thankfully been received very well. However, while many people and myself are looking forward to Baldur's Gate 3 from Larian Studios, I am actually much more interested in what they're going to be doing with the Divinity series at this point because it has so many ideas and plot threads that I am very curious about seeing come to fruition. So naturally, I have a lot of opinions about the individual games. Now curiously enough, I've never actually ranked all of these before. Someone suggested it in a comment a few days ago, so I decided to run with it. So let's actually get into it, starting from the bottom, of course. First up, we have Beyond Divinity, truly a terrible game. Now don't get me wrong, I love the Divinity series, but Beyond Divinity, the second of the games that were made, and the third along, chronologically speaking, as it takes place a few years before Divinity Original Sin 2, but Beyond Divinity is a chronicle of sorts about Damien escaping from Nemesis, a plane that is now controlled by demons, though is not where they are from originally. And while nothing that happens here is of particular relevance to Original Sin 2, which most people will be aware of, the one redeeming factor of Beyond Divinity for me personally is that the events that take place here are actually really important to the entire universe of Divinity, which is a shame that the rest of the game is so terrible. So why do I say that? Well, for starters, it's not just me saying that. Larian Studios themselves is on record for basically not liking this game very much. The production was so incredibly rushed that more more elaborate quests were cut down to going and picking up things in the next room and bringing them back. Beyond Divinity is ultimately a fairly linear experience where you explore set maps, and it is so condensed, in fact, that the game tries to force you into these optional battlefields, I believe they were called, where you would just kill enemies to level up, because there wasn't enough content in the main game to keep you busy, basically. And then there is the training system, which is this sort of frustratingly incoherent coherent system of trainers and skill points for various things, but it's spread way too thin. It's hard to figure out what you even need to pick up which makes playing through Beyond Divinity a bad time, frankly. But again, narratively, it's actually pretty cool. But because of all that, it gets the bottom of the list. Next up, though, we have Divinity Dragon Commander, which is a very weird game. Kudos to the people who knew it existed. Now, chronologically, Dragon Commander is actually the first game, as this takes place about 10,000 years before Divinity Original Sin 2, which is made a little awkward by all of the technology that is widely available. We're talking airships, steam engines, just all sorts of stuff like that, that is much more technologically beyond what we see throughout most of the Divinity series. This is justified by the game saying that, oh, all of it was destroyed after all the wars that took place, which is thin at best and then comes up somehow in Divinity 2, though we'll get to that in just a moment. The reason Dragon Commander is so low is that it's a game that doesn't really know what it wants to be. Most of Dragon Commander is a real time strategy game that sees you occasionally taking on the role of a dragon, or more specifically, a dragon knight, which in this universe is someone who can turn into a dragon, which is very distinct from true dragons, which are a separate species. But while the real-time strategy aspect of it was competent enough, the other parts of the game are sort of management sim meets dating sim, and as weird as that sound, the game does kind of work. However, it still kind of feels stitched together a little bit from various genres, and it's clear they had tried something different here, and much of this foundation is what they were kind of planning on using for the seemingly permanently on hiatus game Fallen Heroes that was never officially cancelled. However, instead of real-time strategy, Fallen Heroes was going to be more of a TRPG. Another cool thing about Dragon Commander, though, is this was one of their more recent games. This was the one right before they started working on the original Sin series, and believe it or not, it's it's solid. It's not terrible. 
but it's a wild departure from the rest of the series, which is why it's so low. Now, third on the list, we have Divinity 2. Not to be confused with Divinity Original Sin 2, though I admit that is very confusing. See, Divinity 2 takes place actually about 60 years after Divinity Original Sin 2, and this game focuses much more on Damien, Lucian the Divine's adopted son from the very first game, Divine Divinity. In Beyond Divinity, we see Damien escaping from Nemesis, and that no one really hears from him for quite some time. However, in Divinity 2, he is back and he has discovered all of the lost ancient technology from Dragon Commander, which he is now employing to wreak havoc upon the world, trying to resurrect his lover, Yagurna, who is only seen in this game and otherwise only mentioned in books. But Divinity 2 is a... Bit of Eurojank, mostly, I would say. It is an ambitious third-person action RPG from the late 2000s. I want to say 2009, if my memory serves. And in it, we actually also take up the role of a dragon knight. And much of the gameplay revolves around being able to turn into a dragon in certain areas and taking part in some aerial combat with this. And while for the most part, it's pretty solid... It's also a very janky game. It was also pretty buggy, a lot of which was fixed with the expansion Flames of Vengeance, which together with the base game are collectively known as the Dragon Knight Saga. Now, I don't want to spoil it for you, but Divinity 2 here is actually the farthest along in the series chronologically, and this particular game leaves a lot of cliffhangers. Now, given the wild success of Original Sin 2 and everything, it's hard to say if they would actually use any of this instead of just sort of hitting the reset button on some of their canon for that universe, but they have remained largely consistent with that for like two decades, so it's hard to say one way or the other. But either way, Divinity 2 does some unique things that I think are worth checking out even by today's standards, with the main drawback being some of its dated mechanics at this point, though it is still pretty fun. Moving right along, though, we have our fourth entry with the first Original Sin, one of the RPGs that kind of led the revival of CRPGs that we saw in the sort of middle 2010s after a pretty quiet decade, I would say, for that genre. But Original Sin 1 came with all sorts of fresh ideas, many of which were refined in Original Sin 2, but Original Sin 1 here does have a lot of its own unique charm. For starters, this particular game takes place technically in between Dragon Commander and Divine Divinity. However, it takes place like 1200 years before Divine Divinity, which is itself a few years before Original Sin 2. So chronologically speaking, this is still quite a ways back in the timeline from Original Sin 2, when the world was quite a bit different. So we play as two source hunters, tracking down mad sorcerers, and while the game is not directly connected to its sequel, it does lay a lot of the groundwork. For instance, Original Sin 1 actually goes through a lot of narrative about why Source is turning people into lunatics, which, as you know from the timeline at this point, continues for quite some time. But Original Sin 1 does a lot of other cool things as well. We meet the goddess of Source, known as Astarte, one of the gods that is not the Seven, which are the only ones really referenced much in in Original Sin 2, though even Astarte does get a brief mention in one conversation in the sequel. And if you're interested in more Gods of the Divinity universe, I've actually made a video about some of that as well, as the seven are far from the only ones. They're just the most important. But Original Sin 1 here had a lot of pretty, at the time, groundbreaking mechanics that, again, went on to be refined in Original Sin 2, but things like the way you could move various objects, sneak around enemies, and a lot of other various systems that all mesh together to allow the player to make a lot of emergent gameplay that led to many creative solutions to problems. And for a CRPG at the time, that was pretty wildly impressive, though a lot of the focus for this title went into the elemental interactions, which were a big selling point of that game. And for all those reasons, Divinity Original Sin 1 is still decently high on the 
this list, though it is very much so overshadowed by its sequel these days. However, that brings us to our next to last entry, which is actually the very first game they made for this series, Divine Divinity, the game that kicked it all off. Now, I've talked about Divine Divinity on the channel quite a few times, and for a game released at that time, it does some very impressive things. So for starters, many of the mechanics that later made it into Original Sin 1 and 2 are actually here already. We see the teleporter pyramids, for instance, which can be used to break the game in a few places, just like they are in the other games. And the narrative of Divine Divinity is actually about Lucian's rise to power as the Divine. Though, while I am very fond of this game and everything it does as an RPG, including giving you very open-ended ways to approach various quests, and some, let's say, very memorable voice acting, and a large open world to explore, it is nonetheless a little buggy these days. While it will technically run for you if you buy it, it can be a little inconsistent, and there are definitely some game-breaking bugs present. So while I think many of the things it did were very impressive at the time, it is very much so showing its age at this point. And if you want full details on that, I've actually reviewed this one. But all of that to basically tell you that Divine Divinity is a remarkable game, and it is actually pretty crazy how much of this went on to show up later in the series. And it's wild to me that they followed this game up with one of their worst, Beyond Divinity. If you ever get the chance, though, I think you should try it, as it really is a pretty special game. But that, of course, leaves us with the top spot, and in a surprise to no one, I'm sure this goes to Original Sin 2. It is easily the crowning achievement of this series at this point, and it is truly an amazing time title. They took many of the features that worked from their previous games, refined them, polished them, and made a truly masterpiece of an experience that remains one of my favorite games to this day. And while I will say that I personally prefer things like Pathfinder across the board, Original Sin 2 is nonetheless a fantastic title. It runs where a lot of their previous games only walked with every quest offering a mind-boggling amount of options in terms of approaching it, many of them being free-form or optional. There's an incredible amount of content. They did a wonderful job of expanding the lore, even if it did create a few plot holes here, but Original Sin 2 is really one of the first games where they took the lore very seriously, and the love that was put into this game really shows. It is honestly a masterpiece. But even it's not without its faults, though. There are some minor problems, which I mentioned in my review of this game, but most of them are pretty easy to overlook with how good everything else about it is. And for all those reasons, it is one of my favorite games, period. That, though, does finally bring us to the end of this video, and there are all of my thoughts on the Divinity games ranked accordingly, so I certainly hope you enjoyed it, learned a little bit about the games themselves, as there's probably not really a series that I am more familiar with, as I made a nonsense amount of lore videos about pretty much every subject you could think of, so if there's anything you're curious about or want to learn more about, chances are I have a video. Realistically, the only thing I really need to do for that series at this point is get around to reviewing the few that I haven't, which because of all the other content I've made for them, I've just never really felt in much of a rush to do. In fact, to this day, if you go to YouTube and search Divinity Lore, it is just page after page of my videos on it. So needless to say, I enjoy it a lot. However, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, but regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.